man. We're gonna do a crowd photo, guys. We'll do a crowd photo right here. We stand right there and turn around. Oh, right, we do the I shot. We'll do two of them. Two of them. Oh, I do my panel. Wait, what are we doing? We're doing the pro photo. I'm trying to do this live on Pro the photo and bevel. We're gonna do two on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. And one more. Ready? One more. I'm gonna jump. One I'm gonna jump ready? in this one with you guys. I'm gonna jump in the. All right, here we go. Here we go. You guys are gonna love that. You looked great. But there was like a light thing going on. What was that? Look at this. They dressed the state. Wow. Amazing. Oh, wow. And all of the sudden, How you guys there was doing? furniture. Thank you. Thank you. Fun weekend. Oh, sorry. Let me see. Hi, everyone. My name is Jay Whitaker. I'll be your moderator for this panel. This is a very exciting time for me. You guys ready to start this off? Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you Sean Gunn and Chris Sullivan. This is your Ravagers reunion. Here we are, face to face, a couple, couple of, of silver, silver Ravagers. <laughs> to talk something and grow, make a song, make a way, make a way, way together. We're gonna find our way. Do we have to keep going? I, I, I don't know what's... <laughs> when does this fit in? We got 37 minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah, th that's yeah, a yeah. surprise. That's what you guys do on this yeah. panel now. Is we'll it's the, just you singing, yes. The 28 minute uh, uh, long version of that song. All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> geez. Like, all right, so, all right, well, that's the perfect place to start off. Um, well, first of all, thank you for being here. How are you guys enjoying Salt Lake Comic Con? I love it. Yeah, have a I great time. It. I was saying, I, I, um, I've been, one, I've been, this is like my third year doing conventions, and I've been hearing since I started how particularly great this one is. That's you guys. That's you guys. Uh, it, just everything about it. It's, you know, everyone's been saying, oh, it's, a, it's so well run. People are so friendly. They're, they all come out, and it's, and it's been great. And I had to, I flew in late last night because I had to work, but I'm, uh, glad to be here. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here. I agree with all of that. And on top of that, I don't know if you guys have tried the hand soap in the restrooms. It's phenomenal. It doesn't leave your hands dry. It moisturizes, has a nice scent. That's uh, everyone's takeaway. <laughs> is I like that. From Salt Lake. I agree with all yeah. of that. The you green hand covered soap. all the good stuff, yeah. Come here for the con, but stay for the hand soap. Right. <laughs> Just the little comforts, you know? So, I, all right, well, you guys were singing right off the bat, so if you guys had to build, uh, let's say, you know, we, we all know Guardians is deeply rooted in the soundtrack, and I think that's something that's truly wonderful about, uh, that really immerses you into those, into those films. You have to pick your own Guardians mixtape. What do you make? What, what's your own awesome mixtape? What, 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 what are you putting on it? More Stay in the Time. Oh! No? Y'all young folks need to educate. Hold on, what was that More Stay in the Time. All right. Yeah. No. I. I. I, I, I was. It was. I was startled. <laughs> it, would, was not, it wouldn't just that be that. Wasn't what it was wasn't. It was. That's all. That would be funny. Well, Guardians Three is all, all more Stay songs. <laughs> I'm for it. Maybe, maybe a little. I didn't mix it up with. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I. You know. It's funny because um, my brothers and I are all really into music, and so the the soundtrack that he created is very much um, a lot of the songs that I grew up loving as well. So I kind of know that whole catalog of, uh, you know, I, I, I believe his soundtrack starts with like a couple hundred songs yeah, yeah. that he listens to while he's writing. And then he kind of winnows it down to the, to the uh, you know, the few that end up in the movies. But, um, and we don't say his name. Oh, we just call him him. Yeah, right. <laughs> and he, <laughs> he shall not be spoken of. Yeah. No. Stop it! <laughs> can, can, can I say it? Yeah, you okay. can say it. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> he's a big guy. Like he's six four. He shook my hand backstage. Was like, yes, okay, you're yes, you're a very strong individual. You as well. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't put up with that. I wouldn't put up with that. No, it's okay. I have a big heart. <laughs> But, no, but, but so what song, you, what, or at least what, what, what would you put on there? Oh man, I mean, 
Well, you were, you do, were do I have to stay in line with? Yeah. Do I have to stay in line with? No, what just I mean, just, genre that's, 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 I would like to see some '90s hip hop on there, personally. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Gosh, I don't like, know. Like who? Oh, you man. seem like a Wu Tang kind of guy. Um, I love the Wu Tang. I love Gangstar. I'll go deep. I love Lord Finesse. Anybody Whoa! Wow! Wow! Yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, you don't know what you're messing with here. Yeah, a, lot are, yeah. a lot of people are googling. Well, what, what, what did he yeah, just say? Yeah. Is Lord Finesse Shop a character Rock? in Guardians? Can we get some Slick Rick? How about that? How about <laughs> Guardians that would be cool. all Slick Rick. Slick tunes. Rick. That would so, be yeah. cool. Anyway, um, I'm gonna say first off that I, when they told me that I got this panel, the first, like, I was really excited because yes, I loved you guys both in Guardians. That's awesome. But Kirk and Benny. That's the. That's what. I, I'm sorry, like I, like, I had a girlfriend that, uh, that made me sit down and watch Gilmore Girls. And, I was, and I, was, I was trying to be the good guy, and I fell in love with your character, man. Like, I was like, I'm all about, I'm all about Kirk, so yeah. So thank you for being I here. appreciate that. One time I, I was at a convention doing a, a Guardians panel with Michael Rooker, and I got like 10 or 12 Gilmore Girls questions in a row. And I think that's why he doesn't want to do panels with me. <laughs> Probably, probably at some point. What is Gilmore Girl? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what that is. When the truth is, the truth is, is that Michael Rooker's dirty little secret is that he's the biggest Gilmore Girls fan <laughs> in the world. Watches every episode multiple times. Every dude is. If you, dudes, fellas, watch the show. Okay, it's, it's good. Uh, but and I, I loved you. I loved you in Stranger Things. I mean, you were actually the first person to show, your character is the first person to show Eleven like an actual, you know, good human contact. Yeah, the Duffer Brothers pulled, pulled a real fancy trick by making me seem important. <laughs> and then just killing me right in the head. Is that what happened? They killed me so hard in the head. But, mm. but, but you look good. Spoiler. <laughs> yeah. There's I a... gotta see that now because I, I only watch, this is why I haven't seen This Is Us, is that I only like to watch things you're in if you die. Which is most things. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'll yeah. have to make sure I check that out. Yeah, Di dying on camera was my yeah. minor in college. <laughs> hey, you, you, it looks like you're gonna be the new Sean Bean. I mean, like, just... yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> he dies in everything. No, um, so, yeah, when they, when they came to you with the idea of taser face, like, 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 please take me through this. Like, how, how... Th well, yeah, so, I, 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 mm. he, he's a, he's an obscure character from the Marvel Universe, and so in my head, I'm going, I just, I really hope that this is a joke. I hope that this name is a joke. <laughs> and sure enough, sure enough it was. Um, because I couldn't figure out how we were going to make, uh, uh, someone named Taserface, truly uh, a, a formidable yeah. <laughs> opponent. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I uh, laughed so hard when you died. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I shouldn't have said that out loud. I'm gonna go. Don't worry, <laughs> I'll, I'll do the same when you die. Okay. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> It's funny though. You're, that last take is great. That it's, last, that last look on his face, because it's not even. Uh, it's just kind of a. It's like a puppy. He's like. Ah. It's like a. It's like a one of those. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. yeah. How long did it take for you to get into all that? I mean, I about two and a half, three hours. It's a. Uh, it's not. It's not as long as anybody else on that on okay. that uh, uh, film. Actually, it was pretty pretty short period of time. They got. The, uh, the makeup artist got real good at it, and, uh, and so the time got less and less each time we did it. That's awesome. Like, and you're a very handsome man, I will, I will say that. Because Why did he get quiet when he's, I said that? He's just trying to dig himself out of that dying hole. That well, I mean, for, for a guy named Taserface, you, you got a handsome face, all right? Well, thank you. Thank Hashtag you. handsome face, there it is. So what's next for, what, what's next for, for you guys? What, what are you guys currently working on? Well, uh, I've been working on this little, this little indie, these these indie movies that we got a Kickstarter together. Um, it's called Avengers: Infinity War. Uh, 
I, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. That was uh, very, uh, very good. Uh, uh, yeah, no, so uh, I've been doing that for, uh, for a little while, and I've been down in Atlanta. That's where I flew in from last night. It's really fun. Um, everything I've just told you about it is as much as I can say. Um, so I can't say anything else, but it, that's been great. It's and you're, the, he's shooting yeah. right now, too. Yeah, I'm working on uh, season two of This Is Us. Uh, starts this Tuesday. Yeah, 9 p.m. NBC. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> do you live in this show? What's that? Do you, do you live in... So far, so good. Okay, good. I want there, to see we, you had, we had a bit of a shaky a moment, scare, right? We had a, a bit of a shaky moment in, in season one. Yes. Where my character, it's been revealed, has some kind of heart problem, and, and, we, and I took a dive for a second. Yeah, and then I was like, oh, well, maybe I should start watching. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and, then, and then you heard that I lived, and you're like, yeah, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, oh, great. I can, uh, I can check out Handmaid's Tale. Let Chris live, okay? Let Chris live. I'm rooting for you and everything now. Just, just... Hashtag, who said that? Hashtag? Yes, there we go. Um, so, uh, you, you can't tell us anything about Avengers Infinity War, which is fine. I'm good with that. Yeah, it's fun. I've, I've worked with some uh, new people. Okay. Can't say who they are. I know, that's fine. Are your new friends really strong and powerful? Um, Don't do it. They, they will spin they have, it. They, they will have spin strong it. and powerful personalities as people nice. okay. in real life. Nice. Cool. Strong and powerful odors. <laughs> After a day on set in some yeah. of those suits, yeah. Do you work with any old people? Uh, what, old people? What? You said you work with some new people. That's why yeah. you oh, work with oh, old, old people. Oh, old, like people I've worked with before. Not yes. geriatrics. Yes, I've worked with. I've worked with a, a bunch of. Or wait, is Stan Lee in it? Old and new. Uh, stop. I, stop. I, I've heard great things about. No, I've, honestly, I've heard some great things about your friends. You know, like your new friends that you've met. You know, I heard one guy. He's incredible. You know, I mean, it, it, and. Uh, <laughs> One guy's a knight in shining armor, I mean, and one guy really brings the hammer down, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, Do you want us to leave? You can just finish your, <laughs> finish your set? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm working on my tight five at the comedy store, okay? <laughs> no, no, but, uh, no, yeah, it's been great. Seriously, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's like, there are these, you know, huge-ass movies, and, and uh, the, the Russo brothers are awesome, and it's been cool. Awesome. Um, what, what, when I was asking, I mean, are you, are you working on anything a little, maybe a little smaller? Like, <laughs> like, um, an actual indie film that needs a Kickstarter? You know, I'm going to be doing this for a little bit, and then I'm going to go shoot a movie um, early next year. Uh, looks like I'm shooting this movie called The Tom Commandments. Um, and, uh, and then, I don't know, we'll see. I mean, Guardians 3 will be coming around, around the bend sooner or later. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to stay busy. I'm going to do a, a horror movie later this year, just for a couple days. Um, awesome. Yeah, it's cool. Awesome. Um, I just, I want to get this, uh, we are, I know we have some people lined up for questions already. I, I kind of want to get to those people right off the bat. If, so if you, um, if you, where's the mics at? Oh, there they are. Okay. Hi. And then they're, wow. Hi. No, that was wow. She illuminates. <laughs> Uh, Sean, I love you as Kirk in Gilmore Girls. Thank you. But my question is for Chris. Is there anything you can tell us, anything we might find out this season on This Is Us of how Jack or when he dies? Anything? <laughs> I, I like, I, I read the end of Harry Potter before uh, the rest of the book. <laughs> this is where I just have to say nothing. Because I will accidentally say something because <laughs> I have a huge mouth if you hadn't noticed I cannot tell you um, but I believe that Miguel murdered him <laughs> to steal his Mandy Moore wife I don't know if that's confirmed that's one fan's theory thank you Kirk is like my favorite character of any show ever. 
I'm wondering how much of Kirk's funniness and personality um, was your creation versus scripted, and if you have funny behind-the-scenes stories about playing Kirk. Oh, goodness. Um, well, it was certainly a lot of fun to play Kirk. I got to do a lot of interesting things. I would say that in terms of the, I mean, how much was my own creation? I mean, all of, all of the words are from Amy Sherman Palladino and Dan and, and their writer's room. Um, and I was lucky to have great writing. But I, I think that since the character was not originally intended to be a regular, I just came on as a, as a DSL installer and I was asked back again and again and eventually became part of the, the fabric of the town. Um, I, I think that it was a really good, um, for me it was a really fulfilling creative experience was sort of a give and take with the creators of the show about the character, just in terms of how I portrayed him. So we never sat down and talked about who Kirk was, but I would do things on set, mannerisms or whatever, and then she'd start to write more towards that, and I'd start to act more towards that, and along the way we kind of built this character over, you know, over time that, uh, that I think is really, um, it's certainly super fun for me to play, and, I know that uh, he's, you know, I've gotten such a good response from fans. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I love doing it. Um, I love doing it. Thanks. That's a good thing Michael Roker isn't here. What was it? Good thing Michael isn't here. Because my question is for Sean. Out of, <laughs> out of all the jobs that Kirk had in Stars Hollow, what is your favorite and why? Um, well, a lot of my favorite episodes are, are episodes where Kirk isn't working, really, you know, like when he's playing Tevya and Fiddler on the Roof, or <laughs> with, with eight-year-olds, um, or, uh, you know, um, night terrors, you know, anything where I'm naked. I, but I, <clears throat> as far as the jobs, I really liked announcing the hockey game. Um, because I got to sit down all day at work. <laughs> I need... <laughs> Huge fan of sitting. Yeah, it's one of my favorite activities. This was going to be a standing panel. Sitting panel. down. You could say, no. no. No, I don't know. I think I fancy myself as I could have been a sports announcer in another life. So, uh, I don't know why I think that, but I just... You'd be great. I, I, I thank you. You have a um, nice timbre to your voice. Mm, I appreciate that. Um... I don't know, that one stuck out as a lot of fun, but they, they all, you know, they, there's different things that stick out about so many different things I did on the show. Awesome, thank you for your question. What do you even play with? <laughs> one more what time? Do, what do you like? Pardon me? What do you like to do at home? Got it. I like to, uh, first of all, your dress is very pretty. It's very pretty. Um, second, I like to play guitar, and I like to play the ukulele. And oddly enough, I really enjoy doing dishes. It's a weird thing, but I really enjoy it. I'm, I'm with you, man. Are you a dishwasher guy, or do you like to use a, are you like no, to use? No, by hand. Yeah, I, I like hand. I enjoy I it. it. It's, uh, I, I, we'll, that's why you we'll, like the hand soap. We'll talk soap. backstage about this later. Can you guys get us some dirty dishes to I, do? Uh, <laughs> I, I like to play with my cat, the business. Uh, he's a lot of fun. He's one of my, he's one of my best friends. And I like to cook a lot. Um, when I can, when I'm not too busy. And yeah, I like, um, I have a new house. I like finding things for my house and painting and things like that. So it's been fun. Thank you. That's Thank a great you for question. Hello, I'm Marky McFly. And no, you cannot go back in time. Okay, good. Uh, my question is you guys uh, mentioned uh, Michael Roker, and you did an impersonation of him. So do you have any funny stories of Michael Roker? Not Both one. You? Real boring dude, yeah. <laughs> what a snooze fest Rooker is. <laughs> Rooker likes to pull his pants down at inopportune moments. <laughs> on, 
lower back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just pants. Uh, yeah. And um, define inopportune. You no, know, there was a particularly uh, serious emotional scene between Dave Bautista and Pom Clementiev, who played Drax and, um, and Mantis. And, uh, and they were in rehearsals for that scene, and it's very, very emotional. And all of a sudden, they hear a banging on the glass, and they look over to the window, and Rooker's bear all together is, uh, <laughs> is staring them in the face while they're trying to perform this scene. That was one of the most unpleasant days. You all right? It's I was, a safe place. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I was kind of glad he did it, though, because now I always have an answer to that question. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, my name is Debra. I'm a big fan of you and Gilmore Girls as well, but you already answered my question for that. Um, Chris, I'm a big fan of you, and this is us. And so I wanted to know, how did you feel when you knew that you got your role in This Is Us? Um, it was, it was a, a really, it's a really wonderful feeling any day that an actor has been told they've received a job. <laughs> so that was a wonderful day. Yeah. Um, but I had, I had read the script to that very first episode, that pilot episode, and we, we all, all of us in the cast who had read it had a very sneaking suspicion that we had something very special, and that if all the stars aligned and all of the, the studios and the, and the networks um, threw their, their weight behind it, that we might have something uh, uh, really special to share with you all. And, uh, and I think we do. <laughs> Hi. Could you uh, move closer to the microphone just a little bit? Thank you. Um, so I have a question separate for each of you. Okay. So first I'm going to do Sean Gunn. Um, how is it to know that your brother is the director of Guardians of the Galaxy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how it is to not know that. Because <laughs> um, I've known it so long. I, uh... I, you know, I love, I love working with my brother, um, mostly because he's very good at his job. Um, but we, uh, w you know, we've been working together on various things since we were kids. Um, you know, I was, I think he killed me in the first eight millimeter movie that he directed when I was about four years old. Um, <laughs> so I should watch that one. Yeah, yeah, you should watch that one. <laughs> um, and, um, and whenever we've been able to, we've worked together throughout our careers. We've also gone our separate ways and done separate things. I went and did Gilmore Girls. He went and kind of got his writing career going. But whenever we've had the opportunity, we like to work together. And, um, and so Guardians was just the perfect culmination of that. He, he both, you know, he was able to, to get me into play, um, to play Craglin, who was a, a smaller role in the first movie. And, um, but he also, you know, asked, he wanted a, a, an actor that he knew and trusted to play Rocket on set. And so uh, I ended up doing that. And, um, and I, think, I, th I think that part of my work doing that contributed to Marvel saying, yeah, let's go ahead and give him a bigger role in the second movie. Um, and so my brother's been very, very good to me in my career. And, uh, and I don't, uh, I, I, I would be pretty foolish to say negative things about him. <laughs> We still haven't said his name, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying it. Hey, Google it. Okay, and then my question for Chris is, how is it to know that your name is Taserface in The Second Guardians? You know, it's, it's so wonderful <laughs> to be a part of the Marvel Universe. So I'll take whatever name they want to give me. Um, I am Taserface. <laughs> you know, you know, it's funny. And some of you may know this, but my my brother James, my brother, um, he, uh, he, he 
when they, when they were making the first movie, so many fans barrage them with questions of like, who's the villain gonna be? Who's gonna be, you know, who the villain's gonna be? And, and the only thing he would say, he got tired of people asking. And so the only thing he would say is, well, I'll tell you who it's not gonna be. Uh, it's not gonna be this guy. It's not, and he, he picked what he thought to be the most ridiculous characters in the Marvel Universe, who were Taserface <laughs> and Ego the Living Planet. <laughs> And so that was all he would confirm was that they w they weren't going to be in the first movie, and everyone thought you know oh that's hilarious. And then at some point, he told me he's like, those are going to be my villains in the second movie. <laughs> well, it worked out, which I think is very cool. So I was wondering how it was like working with Chris Pratt. Never met him. <laughs> Such a Such diva. <laughs> Uh, Chris Pratt is the real deal. He is exactly what you imagine he would be. He's that guy. I mean, he's, uh, he's one of the funniest people I've ever known. And um, he's great. Down to, he's been down to earth since day one. Uh, he's really a joy to work with. And honestly, everybody really is on Guardians. Um, uh, <laughs> thanks. You, you were in Guardians? <laughs> I am Taser Face! Oh, God! Oh. Remember when I was all like, you're gonna die first! <laughs> no, it's true, though, that, th that there's a lot of, you know, the actors are vetted to make sure we're not working with a bunch of egos and, you know, and jerks on set, and I think that it really is a very familial atmosphere, and I do love everybody that I've worked with on those movies, even this guy. <laughs> I, got, I, I gotta ask, because I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, like, I, we all joke about Taserface, but it's a fun character, and I, like, can we just get like a prequel for your boy? I mean, like, just like, like what happened, like, how did he, I, I, there needs to be like, how, how did we arrive at that, at that point? Well, I could tell you. You know, I mean, so Taserface uh, uh, is from a, a race of people called the Starks, who, this is real, who found, uh, Tony Stark had jettisoned a package of his, um, technology away from the planet mm -hmm. to, to get it away from a bad guy. And Taserface and his race of people found the technology and built themselves kind of Iron Man suits. And so he is a race, he eventually becomes a character called Overkill, <laughs> which I don't think is an upgrade in that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, I know. I am Overactor. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. But, uh, Taser yeah. Face, that's just overkill. Hey, that's pretty good. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I, I, we can see a Taser Face I would, prequel. I, would, I, would, I love that character. And he did so much funny stuff on set. Like, there's so many takes of, of, of Chris and the other Ravagers just riffing on things. And there's, there's so little of it that you can actually use in the movie for pacing and stuff. You can only really just fit in your jokes here and there, but... God, there's a lot of funny Yeah, he, ro he roasted you, but Chris roasted you in that one. <laughs> I won't repeat what he said, but he roasted you. Um, and then, um, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> okay, I just have to ask, Guardians Inferno, the music video you guys did, how involved were you guys in the creative process deciding which outfits you were gonna wear in that? And also, why no taser face in that one? <laughs> Uh, I don't know the I don't know the answers <laughs> to those questions. I'm just an actor. I, go, I show up where they tell me to go. Um, I uh, you know that was a heck of a lot of fun to do, and I know that our uh, our costume designer Autumn is great, and and it was you know if you don't know it, that's based on a real thing. There was a there was a, a ridiculous Star Wars video. For those of you who don't know, he's talking about the Guardians Inferno video for David Hasselhoff and the Snipers. Have ended. Have you guys seen those videos? Because yes. they've done both Guardians of the Galaxy. I haven't. What is it? How should it? What? How, How it should, should have, have ended? ended? Oh no, I haven't seen it. They've done so. Much. How should it have ended? How, okay. how, how should Guardian Two Guardians Two have ended? 
you remember? It's been so long since I've seen it. <laughs> um... <laughs> Does Taserface live? That's all we want. Yeah, I know. That's what I was saying. Because that's my vote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Taserface and Gamora get married. I'm telling you, if you can get yourself married to somebody higher on the call sheet, <laughs> stick around for a while. <laughs> okay, so, hi. Do you guys hide snacks around the set? That is the weirdest question I've ever heard. But the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it's like an Easter egg hunt of like granola bars and coffee cups. On, on This Is Us, I, I am terrible at leaving, like coming onto set with a, a cup of coffee and like tucking it in a drawer. <laughs> And coming back to that set like a week later and, and being, oh look, there's two cups of coffee in here. <laughs> um, so yes, the answer is yes. Yeet, thanks. You're welcome. I love that question. Any, any set you go to in movies or television, if you go right behind whatever the camera can see, you're gonna find scripts, you're gonna find lots of cell phones, cups of coffee, all kinds of things just jammed in there that, that no one can see. The Michael Rooker's pants down at some Rooker's point? Rooker's pants, <laughs> right. So my question is for Sean. What, I know it was only like one episode, but what was your experience like on the set of Bones? Oh, um... It was, uh... Any Bones fans? Um, it, it, it was great. It was, I mean, I don't know what to say about it. It was a, um, a really good week of work, and the, the actors knew each other so well. They've been doing that for 10 years. And so to walk into a set like that where everything is like, runs like clockwork, I mean, everybody has every part of their job down. And uh, Emily Deschanel was super warm and, and welcoming to everybody who are, was the guest cast and stuff. It, it can be interesting when you go in as a guest star onto a show that's been around for a while because you don't know what, what you're walking into, you know? Um, but that was a really great experience. Did you die? Uh, no, I did not. <laughs> so my character could be spun off is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Could, could you watch, could him, him? watch him in Super. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, super you can see. Okay. You can see him. Yeah, great. I get to kill, Spoiler I get right. cut, off, cut in half. Um, <laughs> I, I die twice in super, actually. So you oh, watch I'll twice. watch it twice. Yeah. <laughs> My question is for Sean. Um, I was just curious a uh, little bit more information about whether you had any input on Rocket, seeing how you are Rocket, even um, though you're not the voice. Right. Well, and I mean, did you ever get to for sure, do the voice? I, I, I'm not sure exactly how to address the notion of input, but, um, but I, I, w I would put it this way, that it takes a team of people to create Rocket, and I'm one important member of that team. So, you know, um, we really, uh, everything, what is that? I was pointing my mic at the, sorry. Oh, yeah, no worries. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, it, 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 it takes a, a, a lot of different people's work to go into it. So basically, I get the scripts, I sort of interpret the character originally on set um, so that the other actors have an actor to work with. And then the visual effects team uses my movements to start to create a rough draft for the character and animate where he's moving physically. Um, and then by the time, and this is all with a lot of input from my brother uh, for every part of it, because he knows he's always really on top of where Rocket is and what you know, he makes sure that Rocket is a totally, fully realized character from the, from the director's point of view. Um, and then when Bradley Cooper gets in, comes in and does the voice, um, he's got, you know, actors who are, who are reacting and he's got a, a, a visual image for sort of how the character's moving and then he completes the character with his, with his vocal performance. So it's really a lot of, a lot of different pieces, but... Um, May I gush? Go ahead. A lot of my scenes were with this man, obviously. <laughs> and can I do the position, or do you want to squat down? Oh, I know your knees. I know can, your knees. can you do the position? I could probably, but I, I... should we both do it? Oh yeah, we can try. So, so I'm, I'm mostly, I'm mostly down here for a lot of the. If I'm, 
if I'm here, that's about right, a rocket's height if he's uh, standing for his eyes. But so then when he moves, I try to keep my eye, my eyes where the, you know, <laughs> and, uh, at the same and level. So Sean, Sean is busting his butt every day right. for us, like for the other actors. <laughs> oh, yeah. To, awesome. to give us, to give us an eye line so that we don't have to stare at a little blue stuffed animal uh, while we're acting. And it's, it is endlessly helpful and, and it, made, it made my scenes an incredible amount of fun. So I gush on you awesome. and I appreciate you. Thank you very much, I appreciate what? that. I think, but I, I think we knew going into the first movie, my brother said, I know I've heard that he said to the principal, um, you know, the heads of the departments on the first day, if Rocket doesn't work, the movie is not gonna work. Mm. So we knew going in that if Rocket looked like just your typical sort of CGI character that people aren't even really looking at and whatever, that, that it was just not gonna feel right. So it was something we, we worked hard at to get the process right. Um, but thank you. What's the, what's the strangest thing that you had to do, like, I mean, besides that crab walk that you just did, but I mean, was there any other strange, like, like what's the strangest thing you had to do while you were on uh, Rocket? A rocket. Yeah, yeah, honestly, the worst days for me are when Rocket is sitting in a cockpit because that height that I get to down there is Rocket at standing. But when he's sitting, it's the eye line is very, very low. So when he's sitting in a in a in a cockpit, I'm like, you know, I'm like <laughs> wedged in. My body's like wedged in there <laughs> to get my my eyes to the right level. And uh, I won't lie, those days suck. <laughs> you got time for about one more question. Yeah, one more question from uh, this lovely young lady who uh, has been here the entire weekend and who runs a band of gypsy <laughs> children who, uh, who are running around uh, uh, creating havoc at the Comic-Con and they bring me snacks and I appreciate it. I was hoping you were going to say fighting crime. Kind of. A have band you guys, of gypsy yeah, children fighting, fighting crime. Have you guys been fighting crime? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Committing crime. Both, but fighting too. Okay, good. Yeah. Hi, Chris. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Um, so, I just know that there are so many awesome sets, so I was just wondering what was your favorite set to work on while you were filming Guardians? Oh. Hmm. Both movies? Yeah, both. You know, it's, it's hard to... There are so many good ones, you're right. And there's none that I disliked. I mean, the... the the, so cool. the, the, the forest on Burhard is great. The uh, you know the there's there's the the, uh, the hillside where Yandu smokes all those sakarans, which is all, which was an awesome day of shooting. But I would say, in, in my years of working professionally in the business, I've never been on a set like the kiln um, in the first movie, which because that whole thing was built like that was not green screen. We were not standing in front of that was like three stories of jail cells of the of that whole thing and the tower in the middle and that was all there so we it's something like how many thousand tons of steel or whatever they put into that thing yeah the same the, the same when people ask about the green screen i had very little green screen to interact with the forest is there mm -hmm. the ravager spaceship is there mm -hmm. it was like half half a football field and they built them all in a room you know this size maybe even bigger um, and so, yeah, they were, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, Guardians has a lot of actually, you know, I, a lot of Ego's Planet had to be sort of green screen, but other than that, in both movies, we, like, m a good percentage of the, the sets are built. It makes it awesome. It makes it a really wonderful experience to be there. Thank, Thank you. you for not committing any crimes. I, I have to do this, and I'm, I'm probably going to get in trouble, but... The last question has to come from this person right now. You got it. All right. It better be good. If I'm going to get in trouble, we got a beautiful turn, woman dressed as Turn woman. around, wave right. to the people. So, yay. Great costume. Great costume. Thank you. Gamora, hey, it's before only right. you speak, I'll, I'll, I'll add in one more tidbit, which is that, that Gamora's, the green that Gamora is, was the hardest thing just about for them to, to figure out really? on, the, on the first movie. They, had to, they did like because they needed it to be a color that still was like attractive and looked cool, but that didn't get huh. washed and didn't look too dark. And 
and uh, and they did something like almost oh, almost forty different full camera tests. Or so her face didn't get exactly right. So her face didn't get deleted in front of a green yeah, screen. Exactly yeah, right. Yeah. So I, was, I was just thinking. I was like, wait yeah, a minute. Right. I know. Anyway, go ahead. Well, I had a question for each of you. My first question was for Sean. I was wondering if you could give us uh, any information about whether or not your character Kraglin would be able to don Yondu's fin in the Infinity Wars movie or maybe the next Guardians movie and maybe master that. <laughs> I've been working on it in my spare time. I've been whistling to, in, ca in case I get the call. But, uh, um, yeah, I don't know right now. I mean, I, basically, I know what you know as a fan. I know that at the end of the second movie, um, Kraglin's wearing the fin, but he's not very good at it. Um, and I, so at least, but we know he's still on that ship with the Guardians, at least. Mm -hmm. At least at the end of the movie. Um, and um, I can't comment on anything about Infinity War, but um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll see Kraglin in the fin again. All right, Chris, who do you think would win in an arm wrestling match? Taser face or Craglin? Let's see it. <laughs> Let's close this out right. <laughs> oh, taser face, taser. Hey, Sean, I, know. I got money on you, buddy. Because he's a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. He'd be, he'd be too. <laughs> Our, I, I feel like if Chris and I tried to arm wrestle, it would just turn into us tenderly holding hands. <laughs> and that's what we want to see. Deep into each other's eyes. I don't want to, I don't even want to fight. I'm all out of love. <laughs> I'm so lost without you. I know you are. I'm so lost. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Sean Gunn, Chris Sullivan, thank you guys. Come see us at our table. Everybody give it up for Chris Sullivan and Sean Gunn. Thank you so much.